In this video, I'm going to cover the differences and similarities between physics and electrical engineering to help you make a better decision if you're debating between the two majors. As I'm going to say in most of these videos, there's really no right answer, but I will give my opinion later. So let's look at their curriculum and see what they have in common. Both majors take the same first three physics classes, but so do all the other engineering majors, but those cover everything from high school physics like mechanics, electricity and magnetism, and optics and waves. Just the basics that everyone has to learn. Now another similarity is that physics majors will take at least one other circuits and electronics class. They will learn more about resistor, capacitor, and inductor circuits. Then they also learn the basics of electronics like the transistor and diode. These are what make our electronics work. I'm not going to go into depth on the class, but for now just know the circuit analysis with these components is different but not insanely different from working with capacitors, inductors, and resistors. It's just another component, but the math is mostly basic algebra and the length of the problems can be very similar. As it usually is with circuits, the difficult part is setting up the equations. Solving them I wouldn't call easy, but is easier. That class will be maybe four-ish electrical engineering classes all in one, just in less depth, like many other engineering disciplines go through when it comes to circuits. The last big similarity is that they both take courses on electromagnetic waves. This is unique to these two majors. Not many other majors out there take courses on these. Electromagnetic waves include radio waves, microwaves, visible light, x-rays, and radiation. These allow us to communicate wirelessly, to study stars over a trillion miles away, radiation allows us to study the Big Bang, and x-rays allow us to diagnose injuries in people. So you can see how these are important. Electrical engineers mostly only care about the radio waves and microwaves, the ones that we use to communicate with each other. Microwaves are just radio waves that have a higher frequency. They are used in radar, GPS, and navigation, and of course, heating up your food. Some electrical engineers may concentrate in optics where they would care about visible light as well, such as for fiber optic communication. So to put it simply, the physics is very similar in the classes, at least in undergrad. You could take each other's midterms on electromagnetic waves and do well on some of the problems. Not all, but some. But electrical engineers learn about equipment that can analyze radio or microwave signals. They learn how signals behave once they go through specialized cables that can handle high frequency signals. Then if they go into RF, students can use this information to solve things like what length does this antenna need to be for radio versus cell phone communication. They learn some physics of the waves, but also how that applies to the equipment like antennas or electronics. Physics majors, on the other hand, see more math and proofs on these topics, and in their elective classes they could go on to study the combination of electromagnetism and relativity. Think of this as studying what an electromagnetic wave would look like to you if you moved close to the speed of light. It's all about moving reference frames and is a complicated topic. So you see how electrical engineers learn the physics, but also how it applies to hardware, cables, circuits, antennas, etc but only when it comes to really radio and microwaves. Physics majors focus mostly on the physics, but behind all types of electromagnetic waves. I feel I've already thrown a lot at you, so let's back up and just summarize the similarities. Electrical engineers and physics majors both take the same first three physics classes that all engineers take. Electrical engineers take a bunch of circuits and electronics courses then physics majors take at least one, which kind of summarizes four or so of these six others. It'll differ from school to school, but you get the point. And they both take electromagnetic waves courses. Now let's look at the differences, which may help you lean towards one or the other. Physics majors go on to learn quantum mechanics, and this is the study of the motion and interaction of small particles like electrons, atoms, and even photons or light. And no, it's not like chemistry. This is a tough and very math intensive field. You'll see the equations that represent how small particles move. And as you can see, it's completely different than F equals MA that you're used to. Physics majors take classical mechanics. And this is kind of like your first physics class, but on a more difficult level. You'll learn how to analyze motion when there is air resistance. Another famous problem to see is one where a rocket's thrusters are firing but now you have to account for the fact that the rocket is losing mass as it fires because it's ejecting fuel. So now you have the velocity changing over time as mass changes over time. 
as you can see it's a more complex momentum problem that involves calculus. Physics majors take a class on vibrations and waves, which is highly calculus and differential equations based. You'll see how complicated oscillating systems move when given some displacement. And lastly, they take a class on thermal physics, in which you go into more depth on thermodynamics. Now, electrical engineers go on to learn more about power systems like electric motors, generators, and how electric power is distributed. They learn about AM and FM radio waves. Of all those electromagnetic waves I showed earlier, electrical engineers zoom into radio waves in this case and learn about how radio stations send those signals or mathematically why radio stations are 0.2 megahertz apart and so on. They go into more depth on circuits and electronics as well and they see way more labs on everything. Electrical engineers also do programming of hardware such as programming a robotic vehicle or using sensors and programming an LCD to display the temperature and humidity in a room. And lastly again I'll cover which major uses more math. Physics majors win in this case. In fact they beat all engineering disciplines. They take all the same calculus classes as electrical engineers, but then go on to learn more about vector analysis, and depending on the school many go on to learn partial differential equations. They also see more math in their actual major classes, so you better enjoy high level math before entering as a physics major. So again, let's go back to our list of similarities and draw a line for the differences. We saw that electrical engineers learn about high power systems, AM and FM radio waves, programming hardware like robotic vehicles, and just more on circuits and electronics. Physics majors see quantum mechanics and take multiple classes on it as well. They see classical mechanics like with the air resistance problem, vibrations and waves with the complicated springs, thermal physics, and lastly, a few more math classes. There are more to these majors, of course, but I think you get the idea. So seeing the curriculum, now if someone said to me, I like them both the same, tell me what to pick, I would say go with electrical engineering and concentrate in optics or RF. Reason is because engineering disciplines just typically have higher pay and more job opportunities, assuming you have just a bachelor's in both cases. In RF, you learn more about radio waves and microwaves, and in optics, you learn more about light. But both of these will apply towards engineering principles. Maybe even minor in physics or take support classes in physics, so long as it won't compromise your GPA or overwhelm you with work. And remember, this is assuming all things equal. If someone said to me they really like physics more, but aren't sure about their job opportunities, I would tell them to still go with physics because there are plenty of jobs out there. Now let's get into careers, which I'm going to cover in less detail because these are just so broad. Now you can often see physics majors working in engineering jobs or alongside engineers. For example, electrical engineers might be in charge of creating the electronic components or computer hardware in a satellite or spacecraft, something that will go into orbit. They'd work with sensors, hardware, and more. Then they might hand this off to a physicist who would test the effects of radiation on the electronics. So they would see how to ensure the electronics do not become defective due to the space environment where there is radiation. A very common job you'll see is physics majors and electrical engineers working in laser applications. This is for the students interested in optics like I talked about earlier, and both majors can actually concentrate in it. They'll take different courses, but in the real world they can be put on the same projects. Lasers can be used for tracking and navigating, all the way to shooting down aircrafts, so you can see why there are a lot of jobs out there for this. There are also many jobs out there that have a list of degrees that candidates can have. For example, there's a job titled Radar Engineer. The job responsibility says creating simulation software that generates physics-based scenes that simulate missile sensors and environments. So it looks like there's knowledge of physics required, but also programming and software. The requirements for this job say electrical engineering, physics, or math. In fact, it's less common to find entry-level jobs that require only a physics degree and won't take anything else. There are research jobs out there that are more fit for just a physics major, which aren't as common as engineering jobs, but they are out there and I want you to be aware of all of your options. I'll give one example. Two celestial bodies can essentially orbit each other, and we can mathematically represent this. There will be an oval pattern that's centered at their center of mass. But what happens if you threw in a third object into the orbit, but not on the same plane, as in somewhere off of your screen? 
can we predict the orbit? The paths become much crazier, and physicists and even mathematicians have tried to mathematically solve this problem. And a few years ago, they found multiple solutions for this three-body problem to predict how everything will orbit. Now I'm just about done, but there's one more thing I want to address. Physics is a common major for people who are interested in space and studying the universe. I just want to warn you that studying space has much less job opportunity than putting things in space like engineers do. So if you want a job in astronomy or astrophysics, a good option may be to become a professor and do research in that field. I'm not saying there are no jobs out there that are space related because of course there are, but they are much less common and you shouldn't put all your eggs in that one basket, especially in the beginning of your career. If you don't want to be a teacher, I'd recommend you can still get a physics degree, and if nothing else, try to get a job at a company that works on rockets, satellites, and things that go in space, which is common. Then you can get that space-related experience, maybe get further education, and try to work your way up to your dream job. Obviously, do more research on this because there's more out there than what I'm saying, but I just wanted to bring this up because I know it will apply to some people watching. So I hope this all helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe and good luck on your search.